Oh boy, it's giveaway time. We do this on every single episode because we're the best fitness podcast in the world with the best audience and the best, the most good looking audience. I can see you through the camera, you sexy people. All right, so today's giveaway, Maps Anabolic. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications and we'll notify you if we like your comment the best and you'll get free access to Maps Anabolic. One more thing before we start this awesome episode. Right now, we have combined Maps Anabolic with the No BS six-pack formula, and we made the price for both. Total, $59.99. Huge discount. It's like $100 off. Go check it out. Head over to mapsoctober.com. All right, here comes the show. I read an article this morning about uh, the fitness industry this the in 2020. Do you know that it lost... Twenty billion dollars. Holy! Jesus Wait, now what are they counting in that? Uh, the gym, gym closures, and everything. Was like it that. mostly gym, or was it like the whole industry? That's where most of the loss came from. Of course, but I mean they they were counting the whole entire in, uh, industry, but it mostly is the gyms that that um, make up that number. You know, now you want to know what's funny about that? So first of all, that's not funny. That's crazy. That's terrible. And yeah, most of crazy. that. Now I'm I'm going to be honest. I think you still would have had losses. I don't think they would have been nearly as big if they weren't forced. But here's what's crazy about that. Along with that was a doubling of the speed of increase of childhood obesity and obesity among adults. Right. So fitness industry loses $20 billion and people's people get fatter faster well, you could than also ever before. Well, you could probably connect the rise in anxiety and depression, too, because that went through the roof. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, so I'm, now, are they directly connected? Yeah, I think so. I think yeah, there's a direct so. connection there. Yeah, you know? I mean, I definitely think there obvious. was obviously uh, – you know, anxiety and depression around, I'm sure uh, COVID caused a lot of that. I'm sure the loss of jobs or not of able course. to go to work and socialize caused that too. But there's definitely a big piece of like the not allowing people to exercise that has to kind of play well, we into just, that. We just did the episode on exercises effects on anxiety and, and depression, according to peer-reviewed clinical study, not just our experience. And it's profound. It's as effective or maybe even more in the long term for mild to moderate anxiety and depression. So now imagine this, right, for, as, as medication. So now imagine this. You have prescription medication, which, again, studies show that exercise to be as effective for the mild to moderate you know, forms of anxiety and depression. Imagine if we took away everyone's anxiety and depression medication during that whole period of time. Right. Then people for sure would say, of course there's a rise in anxiety and depression. But when you take away exercise, they don't make that – that connection, but it, it's a it's a big one. Yeah. yeah, it's a really big one. Now, what do you guys think about like during a time like that where it's just lost twenty billion? A company like, did you see what happened with Mind Body? Did you guys see what they no. just? They, okay, so Mind Body just acquired um, ClassPass. It's like a like a five hundred million dollar. I didn't know that was still around. Right? <laughs> Is that yeah, the so one where you can jump into different so, gyms? Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's they're they're comparing it to uh, Facebook buying Instagram as far as how they work together, right? So MindBody mm. is like the booking for studios and stuff like that, and then ClassPass is like the subscription service. So they're both software, but they both complement each other. Oh, I see. And so it's just it, the idea is that you can book classes and subscription all in one now by MindBody purchasing ClassPass. Now I, I wonder if. Now they bought it during the pandemic. Yeah, they bought. I mean, they just they just acquired it, but they both. I mean, I I don't know what class. That's a good. I get where you're going right now. I wonder if Class Pass uh, was hurting. I don't. I don't know. If yeah, they like were, if they bought it on sale. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if they you know were what I'm saying? hurting right now and during this time or not. I wonder if it's a good time because we know if we have uh, friends that are uh, like industry leaders, right, in gym business, and they're they were doubling down mm -hmm. during that period because obviously you're going to have. Reduce competition yeah. later on. More Last demand. man standing. I mean, it's kind of one of those things. Like whatever gyms are left are going to be the go to gyms. Well, so I, I, mean, I, talk, I, I talk to Brendan all the time. I mean, they're still he's still aggressively buying. That's what I mean. Yeah. I wonder if it's a better time to buy because everything's so cheap. Well, I mean, there's when there's blood on the street, right? Yeah. That's so right. I mean, I, that's what I imagine. What this company is banking on, right? I imagine what Mind Body is banking on is the surge, right? That, that eventually. You know, Delta starts to slow down. Hopefully, uh, things start to normalize a little bit. And then when that happens, we're going to see this massive. It's very similar to what everyone's saying is going to happen in the economy. I mean, they, there's this idea that is crazy of, uh, you know, we've been running for, what, nine years now that we're still going to we haven't even seen the crazy surge or the greed yet. So, yeah. 
you know, the theory is that this next year, if things start, if so long as things calm down with Delta, I mean, Delta getting worse or another variant coming, it could make could yeah. change everything. But so long as things continue to improve and more people get vaccinated, the Delta variant starts to get go down. It is on its way down. Yeah. yeah so if it's on its way down, more people vaccinated. If we don't see another crazy variant that starts to scare everybody again, everybody is saying that we're going to see a massive surge. Well, in the economy. before the Great Depression and before the 2008 crash, the, everything was on a super hot run. Remember, the, before the Great Depression was the roaring 20s. Mm -hmm. And before 2008, which we were all old enough to remember everything was on fire things were crushing besides a small blip in 2001 after september 11th it was this crazy run yeah so not to I well don't wanna... i mean you did see a, an insane surge of uh, equipment sales and obviously that's because of just it's still like that by the way too yeah like i was curious to, if there's any statistics on that just because you know uh you know we even work with partners that are just you know we know they have to be killing it right now because everybody needs that at their house and they don't have access to a gym i mean it's just well it's it might be the same thing that's going on in the car industry where they might be a little handcuffed too yeah like as far as getting them in terms of distribution made, yeah and, distribution yeah. getting it made so I it might be that. like the best and worst case scenario at once right it's like you got all this demand but then you can't supply everybody because can't you're supply generating chains. it dude yeah. uh, how frustrating would that be? oh yeah. when, when <laughs> totally. we were when we were talking to our friend jason who obviously he, he manages you know big dealerships in california here and he's talking about how so many dealerships have so few cars on the lot yeah. because of the the crunch, the supply yeah. crunch, yeah. and that some places you go on the lot and there's almost nothing, and then if you want to get a new car, you have to order it, and then you got to wait six months or a year to get it. Yeah. So that's why the used car market is exploded. I, my cousins, my cousin bought a car, and like four years ago, sold it, and he was used when he bought it. So or three years ago, bought it three years ago, used, sold it recently for a little more than he bought it for three years ago. Yeah, because the, because the people are well. I think Justin, a, didn't you shop your, your yeah Denali around? Yeah, we we're shopping Courtney's car around because uh, we we're thinking about maybe upgrading, and it was like we could get it was five thousand dollars more than what we actually paid for it uh, a year, initially a year ago, right? It's, I was like, this is crazy. It's almost a no brainer. That you doesn't know? happen with cars. No, cars always lose. This is all new. Yeah, yeah. But the only downfall of that is now you left without a car. Yeah, you sell that. It's now it's hard for you to find a car. So part of the reason why exactly. you can get that much for it is because there's not like uh, you know, especially when you have a car like a nice Denali like that. There's not a lot of those running around for sale right now. Yeah. So yeah, you can get this premium price for it. You sell it. Now you now you got to go find a car that you you want to replace that. And good luck finding the car you want, especially if you think you're going to upgrade. You know? People are start riding right. horses again. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's gonna the, happen. the yeah. watch market same thing it's crazy what's happening on on that side There's, oh the luxury watch market mm -hmm. i mean i think so i was reading this article i wish i remember the name I'll, I'll have to look it up and circle back to you guys but um i sent it over to doug this morning and it talked about two brands of course two of the brands that i didn't uh buy stock in but you guys remember i i, I don't know if you guys bought the stock i did i bought stock oh, in, i remember that yeah the luxury brand that was that, a company that would deliver luxury yeah they were just an online and there's a and there's a lot of people moving in that market now and the article talked about two of the leaders in the space and neither of the two were the one i bought stock in unfortunately so is the the, the one you buy stock in is it doing better yeah, i haven't even gone on my thing to look at since i just read that article this morning oh, and i didn't get i didn't get it in well. my portfolio yeah no i'll look i mean i'm sure it's not crazy but uh i hope it's up a little mm -hmm. bit but it wasn't one of the two that i just read in the article that are booming but it's and it's crazy what's cool is that like so the car cars are trying to build more to mm -hmm. to make up the demand houses they're trying to build more to make up for demand but like the luxury watches, like like Rolex and, and Patek Philippe, and so they they won't make any more. Like they make a certain amount per year, and it doesn't matter if they of, of, of the, where the economy's at, up or down, or people are buying or more. It's like limited supply. They lim they limit it always. That's they've done that with that brand forever, which is part of the reason why it holds its value so much right now. Did you know that with diamonds that they do that with diamonds? They've done that for years. Like there's a few people that own. The diamond mines, and they they restrict the production of diamonds on purpose mm -hmm. to keep the prices yeah, high yeah, on yeah. those. Yeah, at least that's what I've read. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty well. Gangster stuff like all the yeah, time. speaking of cars, I I, uh, I gave my my 
car to my dad uh, over the weekend. Oh, yeah. wow. Look you know, at you. What a I, good son. I'll tell you what, dude. Um, Making uh, Justin and I look bad. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? It's yeah. uh, Hopefully my mom yeah. doesn't hear this. Yeah. <laughs> the fuck only, says only Sal if, got his dad a car. What's I up? I paid for his movie yeah. ticket. Yeah. 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 Only, only kids, that, that, recently. Only kids yeah. that love their parents do yeah. that. You know, so I don't know. Yeah. No, you know what it is? Is that as a kid, I remember daydreaming about this where I where one day, except my parents, you guys know the story, right? My parents were poor immigrants. My dad, he didn't even go to school. I think he went to third grade or second grade because he was so poor. Worked seven days a week for as long as I can remember as a kid. Always was at dinner with the family. All, you know, Always made time for us. My mom working hard. When I was a kid, she would, she would split napkins in half to save money. And going out to dinner was McDonald's. That was a big deal when I was real little. But they were able to provide a, a middle class life for their themselves and their four kids through just being this way. And I remember as a kid thinking, like daydream, like, ah, oh, man, one day I hope I could like do something nice for my parents just to, you know, just to, to do something for them. So anyway, I, I did that, gave it to my dad and he was so happy and so proud. And he says, you know, this was, you know, I came to this country and, and you know, to, to, to give you guys a better opportunity. And now that you guys, you know, and he's referring to me and my siblings because my sister's done similar stuff, right? And my, my other brother too. And he goes, now that now I feel he's like I'm so proud that my kids, you know, do this for me. All of all of them, right? Every one of you guys have done really well, right? Uh pretty well. I mean, my my other sister, she does okay, uh, but you know, working class family, but they do, you know, pretty good. My my youngest sister, she got with Zoom early on, and so she had stock in it. My brother's an investment baker and he's, yeah. he does he does really well. He does a good job of and you know, everybody's hardworking and honest and yeah. uh, but it's it was so nice to hear my mom starts crying, you know, she's talking about how because my mom came here when she was four, and her dad, she was telling the story to Jessica about her my her dad came here. It was even worse for him because it was even before my dad came here. He would work as a custodian and would work two or three times during the day and would wake up my mom and her brother at four o'clock in the morning on Mondays before school to come with them to help them clean movie theaters. And then he would drop them off at school afterwards. And she's like crying and talking about all this and how proud they are. And it, was, uh, you know, it makes me feel really good. Yeah, you know? that's cool. That's Real, awesome. Did you do like a, a whole Oprah reveal with it? Like, did you get him like <laughs> yeah, in yeah, the, like, okay, the, can you drive my car back I'm, for me? I'm oh, by the way, it's yours now. I'm not good at that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know me, dude. I get excited and then I got to tell you, you know, right Yeah, away. like right away. Yeah. So, okay. But, yeah, but he was really happy. And no, my dad, awesome, I'll tell dude. you what, just to, so you guys get, get an idea. My dad, the car that he currently drives has 240,000 miles on it. Now, it runs great because he takes care of that car like it's a child. Like, yeah. every little thing is taken care of. How many years of. has he had it? I can't even... Uh, you know God. what year it is? Uh-uh. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. He's it's, had it for a long time, obviously. It, he's got two cars. One's 240,000 miles. This one's 220,000 miles. And he takes care yeah. of them like. We wonder crazy. where you get it from. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. When it, you had that Jetta until what, just last year, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know. Yeah. I it's still it. good. We were going to do a music video. <laughs> that's, that. hey, that's always my dad. Why you get rid of it? It's still good. You know, that's always what he says. <laughs> it pretty, still works. Dude. It's pretty funny. Well, aren't anyway. you a sweetheart? You were a sweetheart while we were up in Trucky the whole time, too, and a little nice guy. You must be feeling all soft and fuzzy and was stuff. Was I? Was I really? Yeah, you made us, you made us our little uh, Organifi drinks every that's night. Right. Came I out do shit like that. Out after dinner and like frothed up the milk for us and said it yeah. gave each one of yeah. us. I thought that was really sweet yeah, of you. Was, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> trying to get you guys very homely. But you know? Know? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, come on, I always do shit like that. Yeah. You guys know that. No, no but no. what would you guys think of the 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 Organifi Gold Juice and that by the way? I'm oh here. yeah, no, I love that, dude. Yes, yeah. uh, you've been drinking it very consistently. I sleep better. Like, yeah, I sleep way better. I just I forget it. to do that, so it's nice, you know. Like it, it's one of those things. Uh, it, I wish I was like more regular about doing that because it just totally calms you down and gets you ready you know for the end of the night yeah so what i do with jessica is sometimes in the morning i'll, I'll make her because she drinks coffee black but sometimes she'll have an additional coffee later so i i did it with coffee almond milk and the organifi pumpkin spice oh. incredible really really coffee? good Yes. So oh, coffee, almond milk, and then so it's like, so it's a, like a Starbucks latte. drink. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. And oh. she loved it. And then because of the gold juice is relaxing with the caffeine, she said she felt really like really calm oh, and, and energized at the same time. I'll yeah. have to try. So what do you what do you put the organic? Do you put it straight in the coffee, or did you put it in cream and froth it and then add it so to the I coffee? Like, how did the, you do that? I first warm up the uh, almond milk, so I get that hot. Yeah, and then I add the the gold juice, and I use the little frother thing. Yeah, then I pour the coffee and mix it, and then there no. you go, and it's all set up. Ooh, yeah, it's really. And if you put it on ice, it's amazing too. 
Yeah. So if you could do it that way and then huh. you can put it on ice, it's super good. I'll have so, to try that. Dude, anyway, I was doing my story the other day. Oh, yeah. I was going to tell you guys, like, um, when somebody asked me about like when I first learned how to use a kettlebell and like when that happened and I was like reflecting back and I, I did do like a, a workshop um, in San Jose and it was kind of led by the RKC. Oh, you did the Pavel? Thing? Yeah. So, so here's the kind of funny part is I was in Gold's gym and so, in, you know, Gold's gym is just very like, you know, uh, bodybuilder focus. Like mm -hmm. there's like serious dudes in there that are just huge and jacked and whatnot. <clears throat> and so I was kind of one of the first trainers to, to bring in the kettlebell. And so, uh, I was in there and just kind of practicing and whatnot. And it was, it, I was just like doing my thing. I was like trying to work on the skills that I had worked on in the workshop and swinging. And, uh, it was like, I, I, I compare it to this, like, say you're, you're dribbling or you're working on drills or whatever. And all of a sudden, like Michael Jordan walks right behind you. Whoa. Yeah. So it was like, Pavel was right behind me when I was like working on my. Wait, Pavel, Pavel? Pavel. Yeah. Really? At Golds? At Golds. He what? was at Golds. He was in town. Never I told no this idea. story before. Man, I know. Terrible. I just. You are, I wonder you how are many... the worst storyteller. <laughs> you fucking the worst. I'm telling the story right it's now. It's terrible. How I've did you not for, tell the story? I've known you for seven years. We've done thousands of hours of podcasting. And that's oh, your never told me And that's your. <laughs> you forgot it? All the kettlebells? I was saving it for this moment. I wonder how many relevant. I wonder how many crazy things this guy's not told us. This is You've known Adam for half There's your a life. There's a lot, dude. You just compared it to Michael Jordan. Like That'd be like me talking about, yeah. like, oh, I was playing hoop at hey, the hoop hey. at the Maybe park. Maybe you should ask me more questions. Oh, I forgot to tell you. you know Michael Jordan was there I playing with me. I got a lot to me. say. I'm just, hey. you know, I'm all coming out yeah, with hey, it now. If it was me, I would have told you 15 times by now. It would have been a story I would have <laughs> yeah, repeated. Yeah. It anyway, I want to hear about this. Yeah, so what dude, happened? So I, well, I was like, you know when this you're like was really this insecure? This gold right here? It was off Burnell. The Brunel one. The Brunel oh, wow. One. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, so he was in town for some, um, I don't know, event, I think. And uh, so I, I I was, like, too embarrassed to talk to him, dude, because it was like – and he totally was, like, watching me and looking at me over and because uh, I was the only guy in there with kettlebells, you know? And so I kind of looked at him and was like, hey. And then I, like, walked away real quick. You know, I was just, like, super <laughs> <I'm> embarrassed, dude. <laughs> Which just sucks because, like, I should have just talked to him and been like, hey, man, like, I'm just learning – and uh, I love these. And, you know, it was like a long, uh, how many years? It was like over like 12 years or something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wow. That's, that's like, it's like the story of like, you know, you're young and a, a girl, a hot girl says something to you and then you leave. And then for the rest of your life, I should have said something. Yeah. Like I wish I would have talked to him, you <laughs> know? So that's probably why I didn't bring it up. Cause it was like, I guess I was, that makes sense. Well, kind of embarrassed. Well, you, I mean, you have really good form and technique with kettlebells. Were you good then? Or was that? Were you no, still I was it? terrible. That's why I was like, Ugh. <laughs> like he must have just been looking at me like, oh God. Now that <laughs> These I, Americans are I hope terrible he, at this. I hope he didn't go yeah. through my certification. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he should get certified. That's what he's he must have been on the competitor you know, <laughs> uh, workshop. I remember when that all hit the scene, it went it was from it went from nothing to all of a sudden you saw them all over the place. But yeah. I remember when it hit the scene, it was like nobody had ever seen them before. What the hell are these things? Yeah. How do they work? So this this must have been more than twelve years ago, right? I no, was about right because you were at I the golds. You left me by that time, which mm -hmm. we go back fifteen years, and so I would say twelve or thirteen. Yeah, now that was an expensive certification. Yeah, it was fifteen hundred bucks. Fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. why I never did it. I remember I wanted to do it. It was I was a manager already, which it didn't benefit me to get any more. You got certs. yoga certified instead. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you that did, didn't that's you? a different story. That's true. <laughs> he did. He did. <laughs> I, I had this idea. Right, I have a gymnastic certification. Wait, I had worthless. this idea when I was when I was running boot camps. Um, you know, I had a I had a bunch of boot camps all over the <laughs> I just Bay Area. Picture you doing yoga right well, now. Well, the reason why <laughs> this is my favorite right now. Oh, I started to I I, I quickly <laughs> recognized my demographic that I was attracting. So I attracted a lot of uh, soccer moms. You know, middle aged women that were wanting to stay in shape. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, they were they weren't looking to compete or do anything crazy. They didn't need to lose tons of weight. They just want to stay fit. Yeah. You know, Adam's and, wheelhouse. Yeah, and so <laughs> yeah. Uh, I thought you know they and they had they loved the boot camp. No you know class i thought man a, a good half of these women would pay for me to come to their house with my little basket <laughs> uh, and my little mat and then take them through a private session so oh my God. i went and did the certification makes so much sense yeah. though. i never did it though because uh i don't remember what happened business wise something so like that, that business i was like kind of moving on from it i had already like you know farmed it out to somebody else to kind of manage and do and I was already on. I think it was that was during the transition of the marijuana. Hey, it reminds time me of a, what was that movie? Was it Couples Retreat where the dude comes out and he's wearing a speedo? <laughs> totally, uh, totally. Yeah. And he's yeah. doing the stretches. Yeah. 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 The downward dog. I totally. That would have been. Yeah. Yeah. Adam. 
So I will transfer you my energy. I will transfer my karma. Here is my karma on you. you know it was also right when I was starting to get with Katrina, and so I think this this bit of like guilt was singing. When I was single, it was like a brilliant idea. I was like, oh yeah, hell yeah, I'll go do that. <laughs> show like fish in a barrel. Show here. up in my little booty shorts and my oil and my fucking my mat and stuff like that, and go ch charge two hundred dollars an hour to go they do yoga, lied about it. yoga wow. stretches. Honey, how was your yoga today? Oh, uh, it was great. Yeah. She yeah. taught us good stuff today. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. what's her name? Uh, Change your name. So that's Ricardo. actually it was probably maybe now I think back it was more related to, or maybe the combination of transitioning to another business that was probably doing even more uh, making more money for me and then also probably starting to date and wow. get serious with Katrina I probably thought yeah this is probably not the best wow. mm. I, I actually I toyed with the idea of doing Chinese medicine certification but I never actually went through it oh really no, yeah. because it's like seven years long <laughs> oh, is it really oh, wow. that long? Yeah, dude. Oh, I didn't know I'm that. Like, That's oh, intense. Know, I'm like, maybe I'll do like a year and learn or whatever. And I, there was a, what's the school of your five branches, I think it's called? Uh, really good school for acupuncture, Chinese medicine. And it's like, it's a legit, like, it's a big deal. Yeah, so I looked that, through it. I'm been like, interesting. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, I how can't I do anything for that. Long, that's so. how I feel about. I mean, I talked about this, so I'm sure, and I get DMs all the time of people asking me, "Hey, did you get your real estate license?" And fuck, no, I didn't. But let me tell you, I was definitely cocky about that. I was like, "Oh yeah, we could, I could build this company and do this and do that." And on the side, I'll get my real estate license. Like, <laughs> little did I know, like it's like learning law. <laughs> and so there was just intense. So many regulations. Oh law. yeah, it was so intense. And then I still was kind of pushing through and trying to chip away as much as I could. But you know, it got to a point where, like, obviously, the things that we do here are far more important, mm -hmm. and that that isn't going to benefit me that much financially. Like, there's not, there's nothing that uh, being having our my real estate license right now would benefit us vi financially. Really, it'd be, it would be nice to have, and it would be a cool yeah, fallback you, plan. And also, to your credit, um, you know, you you dive you dive really deep into stuff you're into, and you're constantly researching and reading, and you've partnered with people who. I mean, people don't know this, but Adam is mostly responsible for our, our side investments. He manages all that. And uh, you're, I mean, you're obviously very good at it. So although you don't have the license, you you know your shit. Right? Well, you that was kind of what, find people to team yes. up with it. Yes. Yeah. Well, and that was kind of what made me like, I was like, okay, it, uh, it, it's not going to accelerate that anymore for us. And it was like uh, the amount of time that it would take for me to do that and what it would take better me. spent doing yeah other so stuff. <laughs> i mean i i definitely anybody that has it man I, I have a lot more respect i actually honestly i didn't think it was that big of a deal i really thought it was going to be like i mean it reminded me of like uh, probably one of the hardest certifications that mm -hmm. i did was the corrective exercise specialist like that one was i did that one yeah mm -hmm. that was pretty extensive you know i did that one and never took the test Oh, really? Yeah, I did all the course and everything, and then I went and opened up my own <clears throat> studio, and when you own your own business, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you don't. Cares? You make the same amount. Like, yeah. When you work for a gym, they pay you Dude, more. Dude, I've done that so many times. Yeah. They just go through the course, and I don't care about Well, for me, it's the about the knowledge, yeah. and I, but I, it was really, I mean, the NASM uh, CES is legit. Yeah. It yeah. is really in-depth. Oh, it was, it, was, it, was the hardest, it was the hardest test that I actually had to take, and it was probably one of the last ones, because like you guys, I did the same thing. Uh, once you got into the management management role um i didn't get paid anymore so didn't i've matter. probably yeah. been through 30 certifications or so i had eight mm. so i only actually took mm -hmm. like eight tests because once you get to a point where i didn't get any money from it it was like okay why pay go pay? i i had the connection so as a manager they would always give me let me in the classes for free yeah kind of like what we even get here right so all the the courses that have come mm -hmm. through here they let us sit in for free but I actually don't pay to get the certification because no. I don't really oh, care. I know what course I took once that was really weird. That was really hard for me. Mm. I got a Series 6 oh, and, series, and a 63 license. This is when I did, I was a premier banker for a second. Right? I imagine that's a lot of like law and regulations and shit, like, right? Now, it's not a Series 7, which is another level, right? But Series 6 and 63, f for someone who had no experience whatsoever, it was like learning Chinese. It was a totally... Well, that's what the real estate one was like for me. I it's was, a new language. I was, mm -hmm. it, And it, that's what it reminded me of the corrective exercise specialist stuff was like the... I needed to dedicate... I had... I think I got the, the um, like glossary or index cards and I think I want to say there was... 800 mm. terms and definitions that I needed to like memorize and yeah. learn that I did were all unfamiliar. So it's not like I like had some sort of a background. Like, I mean, we have all of us have like brand new. anatomy and physiology background. So even the hardest national certs aren't that bad because you have some sort of a foundational base there. Right. 
But with real estate, like the terms were like almost all foreign. Oh, that's what it was like. And the way that I studied for it, and this is the sometimes with tests that don't that aren't good, is that you could study for the test, which is essentially what I did. And mm. I t- I had all these courses that would teach you to how to take the test, and I would memorize things and do it over and over again. And I did. I passed my first time. Mm. But uh, ask me about that stuff now. I don't remember. I, I don't remember a damn thing. I know, isn't that funny? Dude, I was I like when I was going for my astrology degree. Shut up. And then what? No, I, I'm just kidding. I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Another story. <laughs> I was just really. We don't know. Hey, you hey, get away with that science. shit all the time now. Just like an Aquarius. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's what total I Aquarius expect. moment right there. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to tell you guys that uh, over the weekend or. Actually, over the weekend, over the week, last week, I interviewed with um, the sculpted vegan. Are you? Do you guys know who this is? Oh, you told us that you were doing that. How was that? So, yeah, Kim, that? her name is Kim Constable, and she's uh, she's based out of Ireland. You did that while we were up in Truckee, didn't I did. you? Yeah. So she's based out of Ireland. She's a vegan, you know, fitness expert. But I love her because the way she presents her information, she's not like this dogmatic zealot. Very open, hmm. um, super. She's totally our flavor, right? She she's like she could be brash and abrasive, but funny. Really cares about the people she works with. Anyway, I had a great conversation with her. She hmm. looks amazing, of course, fit the whole deal. But she's got a great presentation. Her podcast is doing well. I loved hearing about her success. So where is she I'll based be, out of again? Would you say Ireland, Ireland? Belfast? Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Oh. And she does a great job. How did you get linked up? How did that even happen? So Michaela Peterson, oh. obviously who knows us, is good friends with her. Wait, now here's what's funny about that. Michaela Peterson's carnivore diet. <laughs> I know. Person. That's why I'm wondering. I'm like, how's that? You know what though? That just shows you how mix. Though, that's why we like them. They're not dogmatic about Correct. it. Correct. Right. Yeah. It's, it's like, Correct. yes, that's they follow that diet, but it, that doesn't mean that like I don't understand why you would follow Correct. the opposite. Correct. Right? But so. I had a great conversation with her. I'm gonna be on her podcast, which will probably air in a, I don't know, a week or two. And she was energetic and everything. She's just great. Great it's personality. Stupid. Oh, stupid. 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 I get what you're trying to say here. Actually, speaking <laughs> of right which, yeah. speaking of which, there was a study that came out that showed that women who eat animal protein have more muscle mass than women who don't. There was this big study where they were looking at and, and doing, you know, doing lots of controls and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And eating animal protein is associated with more muscle mass. Uh, in women, according to this particular study. Well, I mean, I, based off our experience, I would guess that's obvious because most of them under eat it. I mean, that was the most common thing yeah. that I noticed with all my female clients is protein rarely ever did low. I get a female client assess the diet and go, hey, your protein yeah. intake's fine. Yeah. Almost every single one of them I had to say. And it's easier to get with animal. Well, it's easier to get and it's a better source. You've mm-hmm. already talked about this before. And it, that's where that really matters. If you're under eating protein, the quality is even more important. Yes. So I imagine that's why that study would point that. Yes. Uh, and I got this huge, actually this huge, because it was posted in a group that I follow <laughs> on Facebook. And there's, because I follow, you guys know I follow these groups and I, they're, this, this is how I filter my <clears throat> studies. It's really cool. They do the work for me basically. But I went on there and I commented and it was a, it was a neuroscience group, believe it or not. And the reason why that one was posted was there was another study that showed that uh, depression and anxiety was correlated with a vegan diet as well. So we got into this huge debate, and nobody in there is really a fitness or nutrition expert. A lot of them are kind of you know neuroscience students or scientists. And I said, well, I said this is due. This is likely due to the fact that it just requires more planning when you're a vegan because. Mm-hmm. It's easier to hit nutrient deficiencies. Yeah, you can't just wing it. No, like if you just ate steak, like if you just ate meat, you would get most essential nutrients. By the way, this is not ideal. There's a difference between ideal and essential. Essential just means you're not going to die of a nutrient deficiency. Beef alone provides you with pretty much every single essential nutrient that you need. There is no vegetable source of anything that does that. Now that doesn't mean you can't eat a vegan diet and be healthy and fit and all that stuff. Of course you can. Mm -hmm. It just requires a little bit more planning. And so I wrote that in there. Oh my gosh, the the fire. People, oh, you know, uh, it's standard American diet, super unhealthy. And I'm like, I'm not comparing it to the standard American Uh, diet. Like anything's better than that. Yeah. And I was trying (laughs) to explain. That's another monster. I was trying to explain, but it's, these people were just, and I said, listen, here's the deal. You can be very healthy with a vegan diet, but you do have to pay more attention to making sure you get all of your essential nutrients because you're not going to get them from one source. You have to get them from multiple sources. Right. And you just have to be a little bit more planned. If you're just a vegan and you just avoid animal sources of food and then you don't pay attention to anything else, your chances of nutrient deficiency are mm-hmm. are higher. That's just a fact. Yeah. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily, again, mean it's bad. So we got in this whole thing about this whole discussion. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. so the protein one was pretty 
yeah. you know, pretty interesting with all of that. Hey, I wanted to ask you, um, what's going on with uh, Resistance Training Revolution? I haven't got oh, an update look. on that in a while. Have you talked to your agent lately? Like, I did. How, how are the sales going? So also- the last update I got was from June. Oh, shit. Well, that's July, August. So I should be getting another update soon. Is it, is it every quarter? Is that what it is? So you- I, th- I think so. And I can oh. request like more like uh, loose updates. Yeah. But as of June, and I th- I forgot when we launched it. Do you, guys, do you remember the month? That April. We- Oh, so April, May. I think so, it's uh, every six months you get a report. Okay. So we launched it, and within three months, I guess, then, right? That's so June. three, Doug. No, well, yeah, because you launched in April, but I think it's a semi annual report. Oh, I see. Oh, so That's why we haven't want- received one for this third quarter. So, so you- we'll get another one at the end of the year. Yes, I believe oh, okay. so. Oh. Okay. So, Damn, that's not very often getting updated on it. Huh? I think, yeah. no, I can actually request, and then they'll tell me like three Yeah, because I'd like to this know. This is a full cause, report. Because the report you have right now is literally the 50%. Per, yeah, but you're at the halfway point, that mm-hmm. report. We've d- you've done double the time. So whatever you tell me right now, I mean, I'm going to hear, but I mean, it's not you. Yeah, Hopefully so I, we've done more than that. Yeah, so within three three months, almost 15,000 units, which I guess, I, I don't know <laughs> if that's great or bad in book world. <laughs> but they seem to be pretty. I have no idea. I don't know book what to compare world. it to. I don't book know. world. <laughs> yeah. Welcome. It's like my fantasy. Could you do the 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 reading rainbow? Reading the more rainbow. you know thing right yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> What's yeah. book world? Reading hey. rainbow. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> this room is fun. Right? It's reading time. <laughs> book world. Uh, no. Um, so fifteen thousand units in a, in a few months. They're pretty pleased. I guess they said it's very consistent. So consistent sales every. Do you check like week. reviews and stuff like that? Do you even pay yeah? Attention? They're really they're overwhelmingly good, and you know. Part of me is like, oh, that's great. And then the other part of me knows how like amazing our fans are. And I feel like our fans will go there and I could literally write anything and they'd say, <laughs> you know, <laughs> which, which is cool, but also, I don't know. And I'm also a little self-critical. So I, I don't uh, know. It's a I rising know. revolution. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I guess that's all right. They were, they were saying it was pretty good, but like I said, I don't I know. I think that's pretty good. Uh, I mean, you know who'd be a good person to ask is Mike to see, because he's uh, he's done several books now Mike in our space. Mike is can be a dick. So <laughs> what? Yeah. What do you mean, I've never what? heard you, you say that? that about Mike. Yes, he can. Dude. <laughs> no, I, Mike is a shrewd businessman. That's why I love him. I don't mean this in a, him like, and I, him and uh, I do this. I like, love Mike as a boy. That's what you have to, do. I, you have to call him out. I love Mike. It, I a hundred percent. One of my favorite people. And some of the people I love the most can also be dicks. And he, <laughs> He's a dick, so I'll, I'm sure I'll bring that up, and he'll say some shit like, "Well, you know, you know, he'll make yeah, you, yeah. Feel, <laughs> make you, feel you know, you made shitty. a real good try. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> not, on, yeah, yeah. not bad. Yeah. It's your first book. You've never written anything. So yeah. I guess it's okay. <laughs> if you're comparing it to people that fail, you're doing I really mean, good. I was number one for like uh, <laughs> ten years. Exactly. First books. So. You know? Well, he's yeah. so, he's sold like a million or something he crazy. Crushes. Yeah, yeah. He's I'll, really good at what he does, dude. Yeah. I, I could never match his level of. And the guy sits in there and just crushes and writes great content. Well, he's a he's an online marketer first, fitness guy second yeah right mm-hmm. i mean that's one of the things that was fascinating when we first met him was uh but i was always i was really impressed with his fit no, fitness knowledge with his little experience in the fitness it's, space it, that, that just had. goes to show you how intelligent the man is yeah yeah he's, smart. he's an extremely intelligent guy yeah, yeah. so probably one of the smartest people uh, you know i've ever met yeah anyway speaking of smart people uh did you read that quote from demi lovato i <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did not. Tell me. Oh man. She said we should. I don't know if I've ever heard. She her said we should smart. stop referring to uh, aliens, ex- extraterrestrials. So yeah. like, well, you want to? She wants you to call them extraterrestrials, not aliens, because that's offensive. Yeah. Really? Aliens is offensive. So when we're talking about, hey, hold on. When we're talking about space <laughs> visitors from other planets, we should not refer to them as aliens because that's an offensive term. Right. This oh, is literally from her mouth. Yeah, I don't. I don't. That's understand. important, though. You yeah, know, it's like well, is, there, is that is that out. stemming from? There's this rumor going that we might find that uh, the if we do find life somewhere else, there's a possibility that could be a human species. That's what. Where did you read this? I somebody <laughs> we get you guys all excited. What? Yeah, I was uh, somebody I'm tagged right me now? on on a post, and somebody had like this kind of like you know real. Uh, I don't know, uh, dark goth looking like human esque. Oh, person. Oh, that's said, from uh, what's that movie? Mothman? No, dude. Uh. What's that movie? It was from Alien. It was like another. Oh, Prometheus. Yes, the guy Prometheus. Yeah. Remember how the story was that it, it, he looked like humanoid? Yeah, yeah. That I saw that. That's the picture. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, they, yeah. Uh, yeah I, I got tagged on it like yesterday, and so I thought maybe that was, there's a connection there. So maybe there's this rumor now that we might find humans, and so she's being proactive to be like, listen, we should stop calling them aliens and be. 
little more politically correct Listen, about Demi them. Listen, Demi Lovato, if aliens come here, they're <laughs> she not knows gonna, something. They're not going to look uh, read you know social media and be like, this girl is going to be our leader. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to put her in charge of the of the world. I don't know, dude. Yeah, she uh, said this cool thing about us. I don't us. know, bro. Trump was president. She like, says like, all the right things. things. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, like, bro? <laughs> I guarantee, when you were watching The Apprentice ten years ago, bro. you would have never guessed that dude would be what running if you're the country. Dating a girl like that, she just starts saying like, who was crazy she with? Wasn't like she? That? Who was she with? Just uh, was her she, last uh, like famous boyfriend or? girlfriend i know she's like non she's the, all the non stuff she's, non-binary non- well she was dating a guy last wasn't she is she is human maybe not maybe <laughs> not i have no idea yeah. the voice, oh really the voice just look, look it up doug you follow people and stuff like that <laughs> oh i sure do yeah you're yeah. big into that look stuff. up who is who, yeah, demi lovato dated or whatever who did she date? i am bio robotic I thought, well speaking of that uh you know elon how he broke up with grimes or whatever yeah like people she's apparently saying she's getting her Harassed now by a bunch of people, and but mm. some of the stuff she says is fucking you know, weird, dude. You, speaking of Elon, did you guys brought up uh, you know a couple? I mean, a couple weeks ago, how he trolls Bezos all dude, the time. He's so great, dude. Yeah. Did you see that tweet? Yes, the, 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 where he put the little silver the second metal. place. <laughs> I fucking fell <laughs> in my chair, dude. I like him more now. I do too. It's funny. I dude. do too. I and you're weak sauce if, if you don't like him. People don't find that, that funny. Dude. That is funny, man. Yeah. Did, did you guys see the clip of the of Joe Rogan's podcast where he had Sanjay Gupta on from CNN? Oh, I didn't see that. No. He railed him. There was a period. Joe did. There was a there was a portion there. So remember how CNN. Oh, see how CNN, which like all these, did he roast them for the the whole horse deworming yes. thing? Yes, yeah. So yeah. all these all these I mean, news networks are just propaganda machines. If you don't see that, then you you know take off your blind. I'm right? so mad I missed that. So CNN, when 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 Joe Rogan got COVID, he took ivermectin, which was prescribed yeah. from his doctor. Yeah, we all know this. He did the monoclonal yeah, therapy. Yeah, we've, talk, we've already talked okay. about this. So Sanjay giving him shit. So, no, so CNN said that what they said, and there were clips, and he played it during the podcast to show Sanjay. You know, he's like, and they're they're laughing at Joe Rogan taking a horse dewormer, and it's so dangerous. And Rogan's like, "You guys flat out lied. You lied." He goes, "It was a prescription. It was prescribed to me. It's human medicine. It's been used by billions of people." And he goes, "How do you feel working for a network that lies like that?" And Sanjay would skirt it and move around, and he kept pinning him. No, no, no. How do you feel about that? How do you feel? And finally, Sanjay said. Well, I you know I don't know they probably shouldn't have said that or something like that. Oh. Anyway, yeah, Sanjay went back on CNN and kind of you know went against Rogan again. Like what the fuck? Like so he, cowardly, dude. Come so on. dude, what they did with Rogan with those clips was so stupid. They obviously spinned it in a terrible, idiotic it's just way. The misinformation machine. Out yes, there, man. dude. And anyway, I love the Pisses fact that he, he had him on a show and he pinned him, and yeah. then he tried to deny it, and then he showed him the clip. Of them, you know, like yeah. lying with glee is essentially nobody. What he said. Nobody cares that he got better. <laughs> right? Yeah. Isn't that like an important fact? Yeah, yeah. I know. I, know. I mean, Nobody I think cares he would, about that. I mean, it's hard to say though, right? With like, and because uh, he's a fit guy, he's a fit and healthy guy. So he's, I mean, to to say it was from the ivermectin, I think that's hard. He to also make. did monocleal. Yeah, he did a that he did, which is proven. He did everything. Yeah. You know, he did he did like the whole full protocol. But plus. this is my irritation though too. Like somebody finds out that you know, okay, somebody was exposed or like you know somebody close to you has it, and the first thing they they call everybody else they don't find out if they're doing okay you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. oh like it's this this pandemonium of like who they were with and all this before they even find out well if that's doing okay I, well that's how i the, when it, Chappelle did that whole thing when he opened it when he opened up oh, yeah. the very beginning where he's like i felt dirty yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah dude because that's why you know what i'm saying because everybody's like oh my god did you see adam last week because he had he has you know start was, calling everybody yeah. who the, else did you see it's like an std dude everybody trying to track yeah. it back <laughs> so. i was on the phone with him you better get tested yeah hey did you guys see the uh investment infusion that viori got yes i did oh my god four i'm billion. so happy no, for Joe. Dollars. no no four billion dollar valuation valuation yes. four hundred million dollar, dollar yeah, yeah. soft I mean, bank soft bank dropped 400 million on them Four billion dollar valuation. Dude, this is massive. Killing and it, dude. This we so, missed. We missed investing in them by about eighteen months. So check this out. So uh, Jim. So this is the this is a Yahoo article, right? It says Viore sets aggressive expansion after four hundred million investment, and then in the beginning it says when Jim Gold, the former chief of Neiman Marcus, predicted two years ago that Viore could be a one billion dollar bra- brand, a lot of eyes rolled. Not anymore. That's insane. Four, it's a $4 billion valuated company. We've been working with them now how long? Four years. 
I think when we started with them, they were like 150 million or 200 yeah, million valuation. That's insane growth. Yeah. No, we yeah. we'd all be rich if we would have freaking <laughs> been in a different <laughs> situation like that. We didn't yeah. quite have the capital back then. Yeah, that come was on. four years ago. So no, it's it's awesome to see. I mean, I love Joe. I mean, but we and the the first when we started, you could tell that the the quality they were going to come after Lulu. I knew they were going to come after that market share, yep. and Lulu just didn't do as good of a job with men as Viore was. I think they it was br- it was brilliant. They literally did the uh, e-commerce thing, so they didn't they didn't go way overhead with the the brick and mortar. Mm-hmm. They went after the underserved portion of the market in athleisure wear, the men, okay, because everyone was going after women early on. Of course, on. good quality, That's good right. style. All First that one to really offer it to men, and 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 then they went backdoor the 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 woman side of the business, and they crush on that also, just the opposite of what Lou did. I think it was brilliant the way they did that, and. It's going to be really interesting to see how fast they scale. Has either one of you been to Santana Row since? Sent, no, since then. Yes. Oh, since oh, you then? have. Yes, I have. Yeah, is it busy? I mean, uh-huh. it, oh yeah, yeah. It's a great store. Oh, it's a beautiful store. Yeah. It's a beautiful store. People are always in there. It, I, it, we're what we're literally talking about is going to be a, a mainstream American brand mm-hmm. here very soon. Yep. Oh yeah. Like very very soon. If not already, people already know. A lot of people already know them now. Yeah. yeah. But it's great. It's great to see that. You know, it's nice to see that kind of growth with, uh, especially because we know the people who started it personally. Yeah, yeah really I feel like I, I I ate a little bit of crow on the Jim Shark talking shit back when, way back when. I remember I was talking shit about Jim Shark like I don't know three four years ago, and they're I think they're worth even more. Wow. What's Doug? Look up a Jim Shark valuation right now. I think they're they're that that kid blew that thing up. You dude. know what it is? It was like twenty five too. It's because they used all the fitness influencers. No, he did. He and that did, just annoys. It him. was it just annoys. I, th- I think that's well, that why. catapulted him. But yeah, that yeah, was but that was kind of allowing my my emotions to yeah. to to come in there. Right? I'm saying like it should have been more logical about it where it was going. But I was just like, oh, dirty, you know, <laughs> <laughs> multi level marketing bullshit. Because that's really what it like what it was. Was you go out there and you find a bunch of really popular people and he hooked him up early and he did it he was one of the first to do it on instagram before i mean now everybody does that yeah uh, but when you're the first and he had i mean you well, I wouldn't mean, be able to do it that, and not right? have good quality stuff yeah. though like i the people that i know that wear it they like it and they they talk they talk about it they like it that it's it's nice but i'm like not that big of a fan yeah 1.3 billion but this is a year old oh I can't so they, any, oh, uh, so viore passed him well <laughs> The years pass. <laughs> you were giving That's him. Right. I know. I don't feel so I'm bad. Right again. <laughs> you were giving him props, and yeah. I, I bet on the right horse. Huh? <laughs> My horse is winning. <laughs> what a dick! I thought they were higher. I mean, still kudos. That's impressive. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a young kid, so kudos to you. But you know, Viore was the better horse. Yeah. You know what I'm <laughs> yes. saying? So because I remember when I was debating Danny about it, like better looking product four man. years ago when we were first starting to work with Viore, and he was like, "Oh, Jim Shark this. Oh, Jim Shark this." And I'm like. Get out of here with that MLM bullshit brand. I don't want nothing to do with that. Like, <laughs> okay. And then I was kept telling him what what Viore. I said, "You watch, you'll see what happens. Viore will be." It. But I actually didn't know that. I thought they were. It's still crushing. Yeah, yeah. still crushing. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, real quick. I hope you're enjoying our podcast. Head over to drinkolipop.com forward slash mind pump. That's drink o l i p o p dot com forward slash mind pump. They make sodas like the ones you drink when you were a kid that are healthy, low calorie, and actually made to improve gut health. I'm not making this up. No joke. It's healthy soda, and it's in the flavors that you enjoyed as a child. So head over to drinkolipop.com forward slash mind pump and use the code mind pump with no space for 20% off your first order. All right. Enjoy the rest of the show. First question is from Elena JB. Does fasted cardio really make a difference? I like this question. Yeah, so, okay, so uh, for fat loss, no, it doesn't make a difference. Um, Now, studies will show that when you do fasted cardio, that you utilize more fat for fuel while you do the cardio. And so when people saw that, they thought, oh, this is going to burn more body fat. It doesn't because at the end of the day, literally, what matters is the calorie deficit. And they've done lots of studies now on this. And they show that you burn no additional or you lose no additional body fat doing cardio fasted versus doing it fed. Um, And some studies show that fed cardio, your performance is a little bit better. So I can even make the argument that in some cases, fed cardio is probably better. Now, here's where fasted cardio might make a difference. You might get better at doing fasted cardio. So if you're wanting to improve your ability to perform while being in a fasted state, this might help you. Um, but no, aside from that, uh, there's no additional benefit. Um, it's, and it's not, a personal preference thing. It's not just that I'll add more benefit to it. So, uh, I like this question a lot because this is actually how I found Lane Norton. Um, 
like eight, nine years ago. So right when I uh, was starting to get in shape uh, after I'd fallen out of shape, um, I was kind of looking for resources that uh, I thought in the space that were really good. Um, came across this guy, Lane Norton, who I had no idea, who kind of specialized in competitors and people getting in competitive shape. And one of the things that he was debunking and talking shit about was fasted cardio. And um, I, I was drawn into it because it was something that I utilized um, and I was doing already. And uh, made complete sense, and he does. And if Lane's a great resource for this, so somebody who's watching and wants to hear more of the science and as far as what's happening in the body that uh, to prove your point that you're talking about, uh, he's great for that. Now that being said, even knowing that, I continued that, and the reason why I continued it was I had tremendous results from it. Not because there was something that was happening that was so special that because I was fasted was that. Never, ever did I get up at six o'clock in the morning to do any sort of movement. In fact, if I was not getting up and doing my fasted cardio, I would sleep in. I would sleep in till seven in the morning, shower, have breakfast, do my normal routine, train at noon or one like I always do. Uh, and that was my routine. I began to do fasted cardio where I got up an extra hour early, go to the gym, walk, wouldn't run or do anything crazy, just walk for one hour and then go about my day, get my training session at 12 one, had tremendous success from it. So but behaviorally wise, right. you saw improvements. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's the part that you, you, you still have to factor that in. Of course. And that, by the way, that's the, why the bro science continues and why you still see all these competitors do it. Now, they try and you know. They find, don't know that's why it works. They, yeah, right. They don't. I don't think they, they think realize the fat burning zone. Yeah, so I, I think they don't. They don't realize that. But the the this was the only time that I would get up an hour before I would ever go to bed was when I was disciplining myself to do this fasted cardio. Uh, not to mention, um, normally my routine is get up and then have a breakfast. First thing I would do is have breakfast. So instead of actually having breakfast, here I was in this depleted state with no, you know, not a lot of fuel at all because I hadn't eaten since seven o'clock the day before. And not only am I not eating, I'm actually trying to burn uh, without any calories. So the idea that, okay, my body is going to utilize fat versus me having a bunch of food in me and then utilizing glucose first it was the theory and the idea of continuing that on and had tremendous success with it. And I still recommend it if you use it like that. But if you think you're doing something extra special, you're, you're really not. Well, this is where, I, again, to your point of, of bro science, like kind of perpetually kind of existing is because it's it's uh, honing in on something that it can become a habit and something like you're adding an extra amount of activity. Uh, and we all know as trainers, people that establish these in early morning time slots usually have the most longevity in terms of like establishing like new types of, of habits in the routine. So, you know, it, it makes sense that this could be an opportunity to now add, you know, more excess uh, activity that in accumulates uh, you know, your overall uh, towards the end of the day. Yeah, easier. I think the behavior stuff is always important to consider. But all things being equal, if you're going to get the same activity as you would if it was fast or not, doesn't make a difference. Um, now, I, it's personal preference. Like, I work out fasted every morning because I feel better yeah. working out fasted. I know most people don't. Most people need to have some food a couple hours before they train for, for maximum performance. I just like working out fasted. I, I, it feels better to me. But other than that, no, it's it's got no additional benefit, all things being equal. But I think what Adam, what you said is very important because oftentimes all things are not equal and one thing may work better for your behaviors than the other. And that's where the benefit often comes from. And we think it's like some, you know, physiological magic that's happening, but it's not. It's the fact that you just you moved more or yes. you woke up early and moved more versus if you didn't. I think this is it, this is similar to the bro science that would try and support the anabolic window also. Mm -hmm. I think part of why people saw so much uh, success with doing things like that is the ritual of making sure you pound a protein shake as soon as you get done with your workout. Like you would never uh, have a meal in the locker room of a, of a gym, but you know, it's become so ritualized as, as an anabolic window that you have all these meatheads pounding shakes before they even leave the locker room. Now, 
okay, well, and then they swear by it helping them out. Well, probably because it's they're an hit, extra 30, 40 It's an extra 30 or 40 grams of protein, and without that, they may not right. hit their protein. They might not get it because you got to literally be intentional. That's about right. It. So it's a ritual. And so it. I found I even would catch myself doing the same thing too, is especially when I was bulking and trying to get five, 6,000 calories. One of the things uh, I liked was if as soon as I finished working out, if I slammed a shake, by the time I got home, showered, I'd already be ready for another meal. It was just another way for me to get more calories and more protein in saw tremendous value. It had nothing to do with the anabolic window. It was more about the behavior of me making sure I consistently get another 30 grams of protein as quick as I could. Next question is from Tejorita 11. If you've taken growth hormones or steroids in years past, do they still have an effect on your current muscle growth? Sure. Yes and no. So mm. here's why yes, right? So muscle memory is a very real thing. So what that means is, let's say it takes you a year of good, consistent resistance training and diet to gain, let's say, 15 pounds of lean body mass, and then you lose it the following year, you'll gain it back in a month or two, right? So it, it takes you a year to gain it the first time, but to gain it back, it only took a couple months. This is well documented. So if you take anabolic steroids, you can build more muscle and move past certain genetic limits, and then you go off the steroids, that muscle memory remains, and you'll probably be able to build more muscle than if you never did those things in the first place. Now, here's why the no. So I said yes and no. Here's the no part. And studies now show this. Men who use anabolic steroids in their youth oftentimes have impacted natural testosterone levels throughout their entire lives. Uh, oftentimes, it shows up in their 40s. So they'll use anabolic steroids in their 20s, and then they'll go back to being natural, and it takes you know three, four months to get their body to, to kind of regulate and go back, and then their testosterone levels seem to be normal, and then they hit 40, and it's lower than it had been had they never done that. So they have the muscle memory, but now they have the hormones working against them because now they have low testosterone. And there again, there's studies that show this, that anabolic hormone use results oftentimes in lowered natural testosterone use, excuse me, testosterone levels later in life. So muscle memory positive, natural hormone net levels negative. And what you'll find is people who use anabolic steroids in their youth oftentimes have to go on hormone replacement therapy later on in their life. So it's not a as easy as right. people think. I think it's a it's it's a bit of a trade-off. And if you add those two factors up, I, I guess the answer is it depends. Yeah. It depends well, on which one's wouldn't, more. Wouldn't effective. it also factor like how much you were using back then and for how long and all that, depending on like how uh, severe it's going to impact you later yes. on with that scenario? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, you know, if you use it for a year on and off, it's going to have more of a negative impact later on than if you did it just you know for three months. Um, so yeah, of course. But again, uh, it's funny because there was one study in particular where it showed even doing a single, you know, off, you know, common cycle of let's say 14 weeks or 12 weeks, uh, they they showed in the study to have an, a negative effect on testosterone hmm. levels later on in somebody. So, which one of those is more impactful on you? I, I think know. it's more than that too. I think there's a negative psychological effect also. Um, you know, you take steroids for a couple years consistently, or even a year consistently and get used to what it feels like to train and eat yep. on those. And then you that was one of the hardest things for me coming off of steroids would be the afterwards. What after I come off is not feeling as strong, not having as much energy, not being able to eat a little bit out of bounds on your diet and it still pack on muscle. And boy, that has a psychological effect. If you're uh, used to grabbing the 120 pound dumbbells and now you're only grabbing the 90s, it's so harder to kind of get up for it in the morning to train like that uh, consistently. I have so, great workouts versus now my workouts immediately. Right. After. So even though there might be some physiological benefits that are left over from it, hmm. there's also also some negative psychological benefits from taking it before and then not having it that can be detrimental yeah, it, too. In my experience, and again, all these things matter. I think people just look at one factor and think, yeah, it's gonna you're gonna have more muscle later because of muscle memory and that's shown and all that stuff. But they don't consider all the other factors in the context. Look, in my experience, and I've known a lot of people, obviously in the fitness space, and I've known a lot of people who've used anabolic steroids in their youth uh, for you know relatively long periods of time, the most muscular fit 40, 50-year-old people I know, if I had to compare the two categories of people who use steroids and went off versus people who were always natural, the natural people. The natural people tend to do better. I think it's because they develop better habits. They don't go through that period where they feel like crap uh, going off. Their testosterone hormone levels stay optimized 
uh, for much longer. The people who I know who used anabolic steroids in their youth and then went off and never had, never went back on hormone replacement therapy, they tend to not do so well. Now, there's also, of course, the category of guys who then go on hormone replacement therapy, which is a whole other conversation. So if you're listening to this or you're watching this and you're thinking, you know, I'm going to do it to get the muscle memory effects. That way later I could rebuild the muscle. You are not considering the whole context of the, of the effects it's going to have on your physical body and also on your psyche. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're doing it once or twice or doing it for a year to give you better muscle later on, it's probably not going to work that way. Next question is from Preacherman Joe. Are there any benefits in adding bands or chains on the big three or any other workouts? Or is it too much overtraining? It, this is one of the most... Oh, I love doing that. It's one of the most effective ways to augment or change your training to produce better results. One of the most effective by far. Now, does it cause more damage? Not really. Chains, maybe. Chains can be pretty... Uh, you really get sore and it beats you up a little. Not bands, though. I mean, I put bands on a squat or on a deadlift or a bench and uh, it feels good. I don't feel like I overtrain. I, I, I see faster results. Strength athletes have been using bands and chains mm -hmm. forever. I know the Soviets used them way back, and people just get strong doing them. And now, why? Why is it so? What's so different about it? Right? I remember when I was younger and I saw people using chains. I thought, just put a weight on the bar. Does it, what's the difference? Why would you? <laughs> yeah. I thought they were just trying to look cool, right? It changes yeah. the strength curve. It does. I mean. When you lower a weight, the, the links hit the ground, so the weight gets lighter. As you get higher with your squat or whatever, the, the links come off the ground, it gets heavier, and it matches your body's strength curve. You, the bottom of a squat, you're weaker than you are at the top. So what if we had a weight that was heavier at the top and lighter at the bottom? Which That's makes, what they do. So people know it, it really changes that exercise. Because uh, traditionally, uh, the squat's the opposite. Yep. Like it doesn't get harder as you get. It gets it's the much, same. The whole yeah, time. it's the same. Actually, gets easier as you get to the top, and it's easier for you to lock out because the weight gets easier as as you get towards the end. When you have the chains, the opposite is happening. So it really changes that exercise. So that's how I I look at this. Is it's almost like, hey, if I've been doing squats for let's say three or four weeks, back loaded, same same everything pretty much as far, and similar load, that's a nice way to kind of change it up. It's almost like changing mm -hmm. the exercise. And the same thing goes like as if you would cycle in and out of exercises is you wouldn't want to do chains and then never not do chains. It's one of those things that you have that's a, that's a tool and use it into your workouts intermittently and then pull it out. And I think there's great benefits to yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, in terms of treating these types of lifts like a skill, I think it's uh, one of those beneficial tools especially when you start to naturally kind of find that limitation uh, load wise and, and to be able to introduce this and um, have that sort of bridge between, you know, that next leap uh, in terms of load. Um, it's, it's nice to be able to get uh, a bit more weight on the bar and be able to, um, you know, work through that or less weight and make it, uh, you know, add that extra bit of resistance. So you have to kind of fight that extra bit. So uh, I think it's a nice kind of uh, intermediary type of uh, 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 a device and tool and, and something to include if you really are trying to progress forward and it's something that is your goal. Uh, especially if you're a strength af athlete, of course, this is something to consider. Uh, but you're an average person. I mean, if you're just kind of hitting a wall uh, and you need, you know, to try a new technique, I think this is definitely beneficial in that regard. Yeah, it's, it's one of my favorites. It's absolutely one of my favorites. And when I do it and I do it right, it's like I get great results every time. So if if you're still in your beginning stages of training, focus on technique and formal stuff. Once you get to mo to your you know intermediate levels, and you want to test new things. Start with bands. Chains are much more complicated, require, and they do beat up the body a little more. And then watch how it feels. It feels good. It's one of the weird things about it. You put a band on a bench press mm -hmm. and you can feel, and, it feel, and what's that, uh, what's it called, the, the thing that Mark Bell sells, sells that goes over your arms? And slingshot. Slingshot. So yeah. Slingshot is very similar. Yeah. You know, as you go down, the weight gets easier and as you go up, it gets heavier. Very similar to resistance bands. It's just a very convenient. Yeah, same, same kind of concept. Mm -hmm. Next question is from Jungle Jerry. Does getting a pump do anything for hypertrophy or just make you feel bigger for a short period of time? Yeah, yeah there's, there's two things to consider with the pump. One is think of the conditions that need to be present for you to get a really good pump, right? You're well hydrated. You're probably well fed, right? If you're in a really bad calorie deficit, your pumps tend to be gone, right? So you're well fed, well hydrated. You're not overtrained and you can connect to a muscle. It's hard to get a pump on a muscle that you have a terrible connection to. 
So when you get a good pump, it's also a good sign that, wow, I've got all those things. And that's that means that uh, at least some of the context is in the right place for muscle growth to happen. Now, does the pump also add to muscle growth with 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 that other other stuff being said? Yeah, studies actually show that it's got some hypertrophy benefits through cell uh, swelling, which tends to signal muscle growth. Bodybuilders have known this forever. They've now, known isn't this for that ba basically what's happening there? Is that your body is learning or adapting uh, to being able to Feel with uh, fill the muscle with more fluid than it would before, right? That's really the process of the sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. Well, sarcoplasm, sarcoplasm are all as all of the fluid non muscle fiber yeah. structures and fluid within muscle, and training the pump theoretically improves or increases that because you improve capillary density. I think of it like this: like imagine like a water balloon. And you always fill it up to exactly one cup, one cup, one cup, and it kind of expands, and then you pour mm -hmm. it out. You spend. Whereas if now you force in two cups in there, and it volumizes, compared, the next time that you put that water in, it's it gets to that two cups a lot easier because you've taught it to stretch out. Yeah, there could point. be. There's a little bit of muscle fascia stretching that'll yeah. happen with that also, um, and also just you build more capillaries, so you get more blood flow in the muscle. Um, there's also it signals. Uh, there's some studies that show that actually I mean, signals more muscle growth. Don't don't the cells actually volumize yes. too? Yeah. So yeah. the cells actually grow and get bigger. Which if they get bigger, they technically can hold yeah. more fluid, right? So yeah. that's kind of what's happening is you you've trained it to expand more than you ever mm -hmm. have before. And if you can expand the cells more, they can hold more. More. Well, it's not just that. You're also increasing the amount of fluid that can go in there because more capillaries start to develop. You start to get more blood flow, more oxygen, more fluid through just your body. Uh, improving its ability to do it also. Yeah. And then you get the stretching effect and the cell swelling effect. That also signals more muscle growth also. They show it in increases uh, muscle protein synthesis. So it is now. If if you if you live and die by the pump, you'll make a mistake. Because that, cause that yeah. that's where, now I was going to add to that. Like so, I was a chase the pump guy only forever. And one of the things that I drove me crazy is, man, I could get to a place where I could really air up and look amazing in the gym. But two hours later, I feel like I would deflate almost like that water balloon got completely emptied. And there, I didn't feel like there was uh, the permanent effects that you might get from hypertrophy training didn't seem to be as sustainable or visual when I wasn't pumped as when I was strength training. We've talked about this before. Oh, with heavyweight, yeah. Yeah, like that was one of the big differences when I started training like five by fives and like really heavy, really pushing the weight was I didn't quite get as much of a pump, but the muscle I did add or build seemed to still be there even when I wasn't pumped up. Yeah. But when I was always chasing the pump and hypertrophy, I looked amazing in the gym, but then when I would air out, it, I would deflate back down to what I thought was like the normal size of me, and it didn't feel like as much of the gains stayed, yeah. if that makes sense. You know, early strength athletes didn't even, the, the pump was almost a nuisance. Because I was just going to say, I mean, that's always been my experience. Yeah. yeah it, especially with a forearm, you know, in terms of grip uh, and getting a crazy forearm pump, it was mm -hmm. like a very detrimental effect that would happen uh, in terms of like if I would needed to kill your grip. Huh? Yeah. To, to do anything. Uh, it was it was one of those things that I always considered a bad thing. And then, <laughs> you know, getting into the bodybuilding uh, side of training stuff. Uh, started to figure out, oh, wow, that's actually, you know, what they're seeking out because it does give you that effect that, man, it, it fills up your shirts, you look, your muscles look like they almost doubled in size. Yep. Um, but uh, I didn't really see the value of it until the combination of the two uh, consistently with the hypertrophy and then the strength training together is like you, you get that size focus, but also now the strength kind of helps to, to it's, sustain. Yeah, when I was a tra when I trained clients, it was a great way for me to to teach clients how to connect to muscles. Yeah, and it was also a great sign that they were building a muscle they had poor connection to. Like, if I had a female client whose butt was really it was really hard for her to build her butt, and she couldn't feel it when she squatted, when she squatted or whatever, and, and we would do priming and we do all the muscles, you know, all the exercises for the glutes, and I would make her technique good. And after a couple months, all of a sudden, she'd say. <gasps> I feel a pump in my butt. And then I knew it's going to build. We're connecting to it uh, and it's it's working well. But you know, I'll tell you, I had it like along the lines of what you said, Justin, I had a client once who hired me. He was a motocross racer hmm. and he hired me because his forearms would get pumped while racing and mm -hmm. he would lose his grip. Yeah. And he literally said, I need to train and I need a way to reduce the pump in my forearms. And I remember being so yeah. like, uh, I don't know what to do. 
because usually I'm trying to get that. I mean, know? I imagine you you what just trained his work capacity, right? You're probably just yeah. having him hold, hold. So that was my. So I actually my experience was, and this is kind of hilarious, but it was playing guitar. So I would get on stage and I would like get so tense and I don't know if like, you know, the adrenaline and whatnot kind of added to that, but like I would start playing and my forearm would just get so yeah. tight and pumped and like I could, couldn't even keep playing to a certain <laughs> point. Cool. It's uh, and I'd get so frustrated because it was like limited, you know, to the, to the length of like how I could uh, keep a really good continuous like uh, rhythm. Uh, so I started doing a lot more farmer carries and I started doing all that yep. kind of stuff to elongate, uh, you know, that, uh, that ability. Yeah. Lots of endurance work. Yeah. That's exactly what I did. Lots yeah. of endurance work. And then he got better with, you know, managing, I got in jujitsu when I first started training, I'd grip the gi and just get so pumped that I'd lose my grip. And then eventually your body, you know, gets better and adapts, but it's a great way to sign and signal what's going on. There are specific phases of maps programs where you're training for this, like phase three of maps anabolic or maps aesthetic is focused on the pump, but phase one of both is strength. And you might get a pump, you might not, but we don't care. It's about getting stronger yeah. and building muscles through that. If you combine the two and train in phases, then you can really reap the benefits. But if you get stuck in one and you never utilize the other side, uh, then you're you're definitely slowing down. That's the key takeaway from this, I think, because that, that's what people get trapped in one or the other. Mm -hmm. You know, I was trapped in the and the hypertrophy one is really easy, especially for you know the person who's going to the gym to be more muscular, because when you're aired up, you look way different. And you want that, uh, yeah, yeah, and you want that. So you and you and it's like it's a I good can feeling. See, yeah, it is. It's a great feeling. You can see it immediately right away. So. You know, you end up chasing that all the time, thinking that that's you know going to help get you bigger. And then, you know, if you've been doing that for six months consistently all the time, your body's so adapted that you're getting very little benefit to actually building any muscle. And the best thing that person could do if they want to look bigger or be bigger is to switch out of the the pump training and go into strength training. Yep. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. They can help you burn body fat, build muscle improve your health and your longevity and your mobility. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at mindpumpjustin, I'm at mindpumpsal, and Adam is at mindpumpadam.